This is Michael Orl of MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me the Motorola Click for T-Mobile USA. It will be marketed as the Dext in other parts of the world. It is a Android smartphone with a slide-out QWERTY keyboard, capacitive half VGA display, and a 5 megapixel camera. In addition to Motorola's Moto Blur social networking um, support. Let's take a quick look at the hardware design. You can see horizontal slide-out keyboard four full rows with a D-pad here. Uh, very good feel in the keys. This is one of my favorite keyboards, um, probably the favorite keyboard I've had in terms of this form factor, uh, and I've used quite a few of them. Alt buttons for um, numbers, symbols, shift button on both sides, dedicated back button here, which duplicates the functionality of this hardware button up here. And this is hardware button. It's not um, touch sensitive. It actually is a click to it. Same thing with the home and the menu keys. As I mentioned, the keys have a really nice feel to them, uh, works really well. Good solid click. Uh, this is the titanium finished device. There's also a, a white version. You can see on the left hand edge there's a volume control and a micro USB port for you know, USB connectivity to a PC as well as charging. This little slider here throws the phone into silent and vibrate mode. You can see it's just kind of like a palm trio in that regard. Uh, when you can see the red, it's in silent mode, and this is the normal mode. Both versions of the device have a textured back panel. Um, no flash or uh, a self-portrait mirror for the camera, though. Autofocus camera. This is the power standby button here. Turns the device on and off, and this is a dual-stage camera shutter button. Up top is a 3.5mm headphone jack. Nothing much to see on the bottom. And the microphone is actually located in that tiny little indentation right there. On the back of the device is the Motorola logo when it's opened up, and it actually glows, which is pretty cool. And just to give you some sense of scale, here is the Motorola Click next to HTC's Hero for Sprint. You can see the Click is thicker, but otherwise the two devices are about the same size, and they both feature the same size display same resolution as well. I've popped the rear cover off of the device so as you can see the battery with the little pull tab for removing it makes it a lot easier. Uh, micro SDHC card slot. 4 gig card comes with the device. I've got a 16 gig of my own in here which is loaded up with some music and other things like that. And of course the SIM card slot. The easiest way to activate the click is to press the menu button twice. First brings up the lock screen. Pressing it again unlocks it. See, I've got a screen full of widgets here, some of them Motorola Supply and some of them third party. One of the nice things about this system is when you throw it into landscape mode, everything adjusts accordingly. You can also use the D-pad to move from home screen to home screen. And just like on the HTC Sense devices, there's more than the standard three panels. Uh, Motorola puts five panels. And if you look up right here where my thumb is, you'll see a little visual indication of where you are with the red dot moving across five circles. You can of course use finger swipes to move back and forth as well. One of the big things about Moto Blur is that it supports so many different accounts and links them all up. For example, if I hit the messaging icon here, you can see a number of different inboxes. I've got personal IMAP mail, I've got exchange mail, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, uh, the text messaging inbox, and um, the universal inbox, which shows messages from all of those. The only thing it's missing in here is the Gmail client. Um, Gmail support is done directly through a Gmail client, although truth be told, my Exchange account also happens to be a separate Gmail account, so you can do Gmail through the universal inbox by using it via Exchange. Right now I'm in the universal inbox. You can see there's two direct messages from Twitter, little Twitter icon down here, an exchange message, and a personal email message. I go into the exchange message, you can see the message here. You can also read HTML versions. Right now we're on a Wi-Fi connection, but the device supports uh, Edge and 3G data on T-Mobile's network. With the HTML version, you can see we have you know, bolded text, colors, and things like that.
If you want to create a new message, just tap on the plus sign here. Choose the account you want to create it with. I'm going to say Exchange. And we could go here and start typing a message. Uh, double space for period. Put in a subject. And let's go back up to the two box. But before I do that, I'm going to back out here. And now you'll notice that there's a little one next to the plus sign, meaning there's already one new message in progress. So I can create yet another one, or I can continue this one. We're back here, and now we'll select a contact. You can filter your contacts based on account type. You, know, you can, of course, flip through all of them. But if you have a lot of contacts like I do, it's sometimes easier just to pick the account. I'm going to pick the exchange account. I only have one in here to make it easier to find. And I'm going to check that email address. And there it is. Now I have two subject and message body all finished. And I can just send off a message. The happenings application works somewhat the same way. It's a central inbox for all your different social networking functions. You can look through old Twitter messages or anything like that. You can also set your status on multiple different accounts at one time. I'm going to say all services. This is a status update. And now MySpace, Twitter, and Facebook will all get the same status update at one time. Hit the home button to go back. And we'll slide over to the next panel. And you can see right here, this is my status updates, and this shows the last one I did. It's also an easy way to get back to this and add your own status update again. This is part of the um, messaging system. You can see I have the new direct message from Twitter. I can read it right here on the screen. There's two of them. I can reply to them or remove them. No recent tweets coming in or anything like that. Um, these are just set up with a test account, so there's not much going on. The quickest way to access the contacts is this blue tab on the home screen. Fairly normal looking contact application. You can skip ahead by letter. And of course, like we showed you before, you can filter by contact source. Here are all our Gmail contacts. And if we switch over to history here, you'll see all the calls and messages from just those contacts. We'll switch back here and go to all contacts again. And if we move over to status, see all the status updates from all of our contacts. There's Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, all those things are in there. And again, you can filter by, say, favorites or um, just, say, Twitter in this case. And you can see my last personal update. And that last Twitter update also shows up in the happenings widget on the screen. If we go to the home screen and hit the happenings button here, again you can see there's the Twitter update. You can tap on it to see the full thing. You can favorite it. And even send a reply. One of the things that the Moto Blur system does is links up contacts. I have a test contact right here. You can see it has the MobileBurn Test Twitter account linked to it, and of course this is just a regular Google contact, so you can see the two things are matched up. I can show you in specific when I go unlink contact, and you can see the various contacts that are linked up here. Now, some of them are like the Moto Blur address, and that's part of keeping everything synced up in case you lose your device. You can you know, then unlink contacts or manually link them. Sometimes um, if the names don't quite match up or email addresses are different, they won't match up automatically and you'll have to do it manually.